we were home playing and I looked down and realized that he had more bruises than usual on his legs and um, his torso had some petechiae. Uh, so I took him into the doctors and they had labs drawn and they called me the next day and I knew when the doctor said that his labs were remarkable there was a problem. And the next day we found ourselves at uh, Maine Children's Cancer Program and he had a diagnosis of aplastic anemia. And so essentially that meant he had bone marrow failure. River uh, had very, very low platelets and um, that meant he could not play in the usual way that um, an almost three-year-old could. Uh, so we had to put the bike downstairs. Um, we didn't get the swing set that summer. He has a metaport and that is how um, he has blood draws essentially. He had a lot of blood draws they were doing in the arms and it was becoming traumatizing for him. So for children in his circumstance they put in a port uh, and that's when Greg came in. That's when we received home health services. When I first met River he was in a pretty scary situation um, for I think at the time he was uh, three. His blood counts were very low, um, his uh, platelet count was really low and, and his red blood cell count was really low and I think his whites were also quite low. So when all of those things happen um, for red blood cells you lose your energy, you lose kind of uh, the color. Um, so he was very pale and having a bit of trouble with energy but also um, because of his platelet count, his platelet count being low, he was susceptible to bleeds, um, bruising, you know, kind of like spontaneous bruising and stuff like that. So he was pretty fragile when I first kind of came into his life. Uh, I would say it was stressful, traumatizing in some ways. We couldn't go to some birthday parties because his white blood cells were so low. We didn't want him to um, have an infection. Uh, so, and then he couldn't play with children in the same way as far as running around and tumbling and bouncing and we just it felt like we put him in a bubble for a little while that's what it felt like so greg came in um, initially uh, weekly or sometimes twice a week um, to check on river and uh, access his port and draw labs so that we could see what was happening um, with his red blood cells white blood cells and platelets a big part of our routine was going to be drawing blood every day and certainly uh, this was an uncomfortable thing for River, uh, to have a needle placed so that blood could be drawn. The medications that he was on had some not so great side effects. Uh, you know, he was also on some steroid treatment, I think, at one point, um, which made him a very moody young man. <laughs> Greg's been with us for two years, um, and he's here on time, on a regular basis, taking good care of River, having fun with him. For kids of this age, I think it's so important to turn a medical visit into something that doesn't feel so medical. When your heart is just overwhelmed with grief, you need somebody to step in professionally and help care for your child and your family, and that's what Greg has done for us. That's the key to, to working with kids is to try and work with that anxiety around what has to happen so that um, that doesn't become a big obstacle uh, and try to maybe use it to your advantage even sometimes. River today is in remission. There, there's conversation about taking out his port, which is really exciting. Um, and he's able to play, which is what you saw today. He's so full of energy and life, um, laughter. River's future is open to him and um, I'm very excited for him. I think I just really want to emphasize how grateful we are for home health visiting nurses uh, and exceptionally grateful for Greg. I cannot say enough kind words about him. We count our blessings every day and Greg's one of them.